This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. What's fascinating about the way that UC San Diego started, and especially the Division of Physical Sciences, is the people. The people that were brought in were the very best in the world. These people were particularly adept at doing new science in areas that no one had thought about. What's really different here, I mean really different about UCSD, what do we do that distinguishes us from other places, is finding the future. Our people, our faculty, our students, our research scientists here are great at finding where the future will be. The legacy of the Division of Physical Sciences started in the vision of the founding generation in chemistry, physics, and mathematics, among the first departments when UC San Diego was established 50 years ago. They were people like Harold Urey, who won the Nobel Prize for discovering deuterium, and who brought some of the first moon rocks to UC San Diego, where the first chair of the chemistry department, Jim Arnold, revealed many of their secrets. Or people like Maria Mayer, the second woman in history to win a Nobel Prize for work that determined the structure of the atomic nucleus, or Margaret Burbage, an astrophysicist who helped determine that we all really are made of star stuff, and Martin Kamen, who discovered carbon-14 used to date fossils and archaeological artifacts, or George Fayer, a physicist who developed a new form of spectroscopy and used it to understand the details of photosynthesis or Stanley Miller, whose famous experiment with Harold Urey that created the building blocks of life from simple chemical ingredients still resonates today. Or Bernd Matthias, who made some of the most seminal discoveries in superconductivity. As it has over the last half century, this legacy of research and education continues to shape the future today. In Brian Maple's physics lab, the future is superconductivity. Superconductivity is a, a property that many um, metals have and what happens is as you cool them below a certain temperature, which is called the superconducting critical temperature, the electrical resistivity vanishes and goes to zero. And by zero, I really mean zero. They become uh, perfect conductors of electrical current where you can take a superconducting disk and then place on top of it a permanent magnet and that magnet will float or levitate above the superconductor. Our dream is to make a superconductor that will go into the superconducting state at or above room temperature, in which case, you know, the world as we know it would be dramatically changed. We spend a certain amount of our time prospecting, so to speak, for new materials. We want to perturb them profoundly because we want to alter their uh, properties. We want to basically rearrange the electrons in the solids, make changes in their crystal structures that might reveal a new property and enhance certain, say, superconducting or magnetic properties, properties that will be uh, different and interesting uh, and useful in some cases. I'm pretty sure that as we look at more and more novel materials that we can't even dream about at this point, it's probably a good guess that eventually we will get a room temperature superconductor. Mathematics has been called the queen of the sciences, and that is never more true than today at UC San Diego. Mathematics is becoming increasingly important in a variety of fields. One of the areas, for example, is how do you do simulations? How do you try to understand the world around you? If you look at biology, uh, it's all about systems biology. And to do that, you have to have physical modeling. You have to have simulations of the cell. And those require basic mathematics. So this is one of the areas where the mathematics of algorithms of trying to understand how simulations work is absolutely important. So we have quite a strong group in what's called scientific computation. We have people developing software that's used by international companies like Boeing. We have people who are trying to develop numerical algorithms to understand the internet. If you're going to finance more and more, algorithms are driving the financial decisions that banks make. In addition, we have great strength in pure mathematics. 
the department's been fortunate enough over the years to have three different fields medalists, which is the highest prize in mathematics. It's equivalent to the Nobel Prize in mathematics. So we have a, a department um, that has incredible strength recognized by the national community. In a unique facility, chemist Stanley Opella combines disciplines, using physics and chemistry to look deeply into biological processes. This is a very specialized facility. As you can see, it's an air-supported structure, and that's because we have these high-field magnets in here. So we do an experiment called nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, and it's used to solve the structures of proteins. The purpose is of biomedical research, and we're using the nuclei as a monitor of the chemical structure and the chemical function, and it's been found to be a very reliable way of looking at the structure and dynamics and interactions of biological molecules. Our major research interest is understanding the most fundamental properties of membrane proteins. We're developing the NMR method so that it can look at the proteins in the membrane bilayer, which is their natural environment. We're interested in the structures of the molecules and actually the electrons that form the bonds and interact with other molecules. Uh, like metabolites or drugs. Half of all drugs in, that are used in medicine bind to proteins in the membrane. So we need to understand these membrane proteins as chemicals. We need to look at the positions and the vibrations of every single atom in the protein because all these phenomena are fundamentally chemical phenomena. The future truly belongs to the students of UC San Diego and the unique environmental systems major prepares them to grasp it firmly. The unique aspect of our program is the breadth of courses that our students take. They all have a disciplinary expertise, that could be earth sciences, chemistry, environmental biology, or policy. In addition to that training, they have training across those disciplines. So all our students will have a good background, a core training, in all of the natural sciences and additionally economics and policy. These are challenging times for California in general. We have a lot of environmental challenges coming up. They all have an economic and policy component. We need the kind of leaders that can tie all these areas together. I think society is really depending on having interdisciplinary problem solvers like our students when they graduate. So we require all of our seniors to, to go out and to solve an interdisciplinary problem. And this is something, a project that is designed by the student, and that's uh, very unique. Some examples are students that we have who are looking at developing atmospheric sampling techniques that can identify trace compounds and to identify sources of those compounds. We have a lot of students who are involved in stormwater and stormwater prevention and stormwater education. We have students who are working in our natural reserves and conservation biology projects. It's certainly true to say that there's never been a time when it's been more important to do the work that we're doing. California is poised to have a leadership role and to have innovative technologies. Our students, the ones that we're training here today, are really going to be part of our economic growth in the very near future. How does this legacy of the Division of Physical Sciences ensure this future? The founding generation of this university were, were incredible. I mean, they had this vision to, to, to build a great university. They had this commitment of absolutely no compromise on trying to get the very best people that they possibly could. Those sorts of absolute commitment to trying to be at the cutting edge of knowledge to train the next generation of students the best way we can are things I think we've done incredibly successfully here. And I think if we maintain those commitments for the next 50 years, we're going to go to even greater heights than we have here.